All right, with that, let me stop and show you what all this neat stuff looks like in a live demonstration. So, Scott, if you can give me a thumbs up, if you can see my screen, if things are rotating around. You're good, Chris. All right, what we have here is the start of a kind of a utility structure here, and I'm going to turn this into a, a bolted connection before your uh, very eyes. Uh, I am going to do some repeat of what we did the previous version. Not that, uh, you know, I like to spend a lot of time doing repeat stuff, but still there's a lot of people that aren't familiar with what the capabilities that we offer, so it'd be good to kind of review just a little bit. Before I go any further, let me make sure I get my preferences right. I want the center of my beams to play. I want the beams to be placed at the center of my sketches. I want to miter the um, corners, uh, butt ver um, the uh, verticals and the inners. I want to uh, butt them as well. I don't want any cutbacks here because I'm not going to leave any gaps for welding because all this is all going to be bolted together. So we are going to go to our uh, library and I'm going to pick out uh, maybe some wide flange beam. This design calls from HEA 160s. Let me close this down a little bit. And I'm just going to rectangle select all of this stuff right here and get all of these beams. And it gets it for me. Now, um, I did have my option set for, uh, for a butt there. Uh, I'm going to change this to a miter. Now, what's nice about this is we're going to give you a, um, a pretty good answer most of the time out of the box. But if you kind of don't like that corner or you want to override it, you can change it from miter to a cope to a few other things and uh, even change the order. So if you wanted this to be butt with that or that to be butt with this, you can just simply drag and drop those to get the right order of how you want your uh, your members to be um, uh, your corners to be uh, trimmed against one another. All right, uh, as it creates the members, uh, I have a little bit more work to do here. I'm going to create the uh, the vertical uh, beams or vertical columns, I should say. So you kind of know the drill here. Just rectangle select everything and uh, double check the orientation. Now, we did get it at the center, but I, I don't like the orientation. I want it to be rotated a little bit. So we're just going to change this rotation to a 90. And it's not going to rotate that one. It's going to rotate all of them because it's all in sort of the same set here. So if we're going to do something to one, we'll do it to all. Key thing here is how it's actually uh, trimmed this off to meet the angle of that um, <clears throat> that roof um, uh, roof beam. Now we're ready to kind of bolt this thing together. Uh, what I don't have on here are the purlins and the girts, but I'm not going to worry that, about that right now. Uh, but I do have some cross members that I'm going to uh, to put on here to stiffen sort of these uh, these uh, columns up. I'm going to go back to my preferences. I'm going to change one thing on here. I still want everything centered, but now I don't want anything to be but to, uh, jointed. I want it to be none. I'm going to let the bolted connection take care of all of that for me. So let's go ahead and uh, start our command. Oops, I better turn on my sketches. Otherwise, I don't have anything to pick. And we'll change this to angle equal and, I don't know, 40 by, 40 by 6. What I'm going to do is I'm going to pick sort of every other one and that I'm going to have that be a certain configuration, and um, then I'm going to reverse that configuration for the other ones. That way it's going to give me kind of a lap joint right in the middle. So there's my sketch, uh, my member right in the center. I want to actually push this thing over so the other one can be pushed on the other side and create a nice lap joint between them. Once that's done, you also notice how that member kind of sticks to the side there. I did that intentionally because I'm going to let my bolted connection clean all of that stuff up for me. So let's do one more. And I'm going to make sure, let me turn my uh, orientation off. And this time we are going to kick this one to the opposite side here. So all I really need to do is just kind of push him out. And it's kind of hard to see in this wireframe mode, but it's going to give you that uh, nice sort of a, a lap joint right in the middle of that um, that those two members there. So it's a nice way to easily configure what, uh, what your beams are doing. Let me turn off my sketches. I don't need them anymore. Now it's time to stiffen everything up with some bolted connections. So let's go ahead and begin. Uh, let's uh, start our command. And uh, we have a new sort of an option within the existing splice that allows me to put either an end plate, a flange plate, or a web plate. I'm going to do an end, pl uh, sorry, an end plate on the splice. I'm going to simply pick these two members here, and it's, it's going to give me a little information box that's generating some nuts and bolts and washers for me. And it gives me this uh, this option here on this angled case. Now, in the previous demonstrations, you may have seen me use this uh, sort of a flanged configuration here. I actually created my own library for that. Uh, but what we have added is our library to uh, allow you to do a, a middle, 
flush up or a flush down, which doesn't make any sense in this particular case, but you get the idea on some of the options that you have on being able to kind of push this thing around. And if you if you like that, uh, we got you the correct size out of the box, but if you want to make this a little bit larger, uh, maybe I'll make this 300 and maybe we'll uh, offset the um, holes just a little bit. I'll just give give some numbers here just to kind of give me some different hole spaces and uh, and whatnot. Once that that's done, we'll simply add that uh, sort of um, connection to the other two. Now that everything's in dialog memory, I click, click, middle mouse button, click, click, middle mouse button, and I've got those connections on just like that. Now we'll add a, a stiffening haunch there in just a minute, but I'm going to continue on with a few more bolted connections. This time, I'm going to go to my beam column, and as you can imagine, uh, we're going to pick uh, first member, sorry, and then the face, and uh, we still have this sort of uh, flush up or middle, which I know doesn't make a whole lot of sense, but at least you have the option to do that if uh, if you wanted to do that. Uh, I'm going to stick with the uh, the flush up case here. Middle mouse button, pick the next one, and sort of move on with the other uh, types of members. Uh, we also have uh, still in our library, we have the ability to uh, do a fit. So if you really want to do, uh, do kind of a fit type thing, We'll do a fit with uniform holes, and uh, you can get that uh, bolted configuration without really doing anything at all. And you can see just like that that I've got the entire side done. Uh, and I'm not going to worry about the other side just for the sake of time. I think you get the idea of uh, putting bolted connections in here. A new bolted connection that we had, let's take have added, is this uh, diagonal sort of member case. So I'm going to change my option one more time to a gusset plate where we can do um, either an, an, a corner plate or a flat plate. And a corner plate, it's really the same thing, but we just ask you for one more input on another face to kind of cap both of the sides off here. I'm going to do a flat plate, simply pick face one, face two, and it's going to give me uh, just a generic square out of the box. If you want a different configuration, you can change from a square nose, chamfer it, rectangle with none, or rectangle with chamfer, chamfer. And uh, we'll just give you a default size here, and you're allowed to kind of key in whatever you think is the best size for your uh, your your bolt configuration. Now, this uh, particular example here has only one diagonal. If we had multiple diagonals, it wouldn't matter. We would handle all of them for you. If you wanted each diagonal member to have its own set of hole patterns, you just simply click that member in the list and change its pattern from, you know, I don't know, whatever. I'll just move these holes out a little bit and uh, we'll um, get a different sort of bolt configuration. Also, you can kind of see how it's sort of trimming that back. We are giving you the ability to add a clearance between that and that face. That's why I left this to none, so I could specify a clearance of 20 or 30 or whatever, and it's going to trim that back for me to meet the uh, the sort of condition of that uh, that corner. And you can see how it's created that uh, that uh, stiffening gusset uh, for us. Uh, I'm not going to create all of the rest of these on here. I think you get the idea of what it would take to create the uh, the bolted connection here. All right, that uh, pretty much concludes a lot of the, uh, the bolted connections that we have um, in this new version here. Uh, the last thing I'd like to, oh, wait, I'm not done yet. I've got to do uh, some stiffening things. I forgot about that. So we're going to stiffen this up a little bit. We're going to add a haunch, and I'm going to go between member one, member two, and just like that, you have your haunch. Now, it pro the process is simple. Just pick the inputs, pick the type, whether you want a triangle, triangle with a nose, and uh, tickle some of these options here on the sizes if you want. We're going to do the best job we can getting the correct size based off those faces, but if you want to make them a little bit larger or smaller or, or whatever, you can uh, obviously uh, have uh, full control over that. Position control, you have uh, offset, center, aligned to edge. You have the plate section, whether you want to change its material from steel to aluminum to, to whatever, and you can actually change the backing plate uh, dimensions as well. So you have a lot of control over exactly what uh, these stiffening haunches um, uh, look like in their size and so on and so forth. M my favorite part is, you know, click, click, middle mouse button, and you're, you're done. It uh, really is a very, very simple process. It takes me longer to zoom in than it actually takes to process the command here. So just keep that in mind that uh, we've done everything we can to make this command as easy as we possibly could. So you can rip through your uh, designs and get them done. Now, I know I didn't put one on the opposite side here, but uh, you get the idea of uh, some of the uh, capability that we have with the uh, stiffening haunches. All right, now time for some production drawings. So what we're first going to do is consolidate everything together. 
I want to make sure that I have all of the, uh, the uh, geometrically identical parts sort of grouped together. And let me hide everything here so you can see just exactly what I'm talking about. And we can see all of our, um, you can see our haunches, how the backer plates, they're all the same size. That's all going to be listed in uh, one node in your parts list. Same thing with these members, same thing. Now, if you're wondering why this member here is different, remember, we have a bolted connection up here. He has holes in there in the end trim back, so it is geometrically going to be uh, different. Same with these members. Uh, this side does not have the end cap on there. This end cap actually had to trim the member back, so we were smart enough to know these and uh, sort of consolidate everything for you all automatically. Now that that's done, we're going to hit the uh, magical drawing button and choose what we want to create a drawing of. I can create a drawing of uh, the specialty components, which I'm going to leave that off for right now. Uh, we can create the members, which uh, you can imagine it'll create a, a drawing for each member. I'll leave that off right now. I'm just going to create the assembly uh, drawing. Uh, whether I want the assembly or uh, balloons, uh, all parts, I'll put a parts list on here, and I'll just leave the template A0, probably good enough for right now. Pick our consolidated list, and it will create uh, the drawings for you. Now, it's supposed to create a parts list, but for some reason it didn't fill everything out. I'm uh, command still a little on the fresh side, but what it would do is give you a full parts list of your um, of your structure. And here we go. Here's your assembly drawing in the uh, trimetric view that I specified, all ready for dimensions, detail views, and uh, you know whatever else you uh, you want to want to put on here. So it's a really nice way to. Uh, create sort of a, a package of drawings of everything sort of ready to go for you. So uh, like I said, if I would have put uh, the option on for the member drawings, I would have gotten a drawing for each of the consolidated members, not all of them, but just the consolidated ones. So we have one drawing, but make four of them type thing. So nice fast way of getting a head start on uh, drawing production.